If you've been into home automation for a while, you may have come across the term Zigbee or Zigbee devices and wondered what that is. Well, essentially, it's a way for something like this, a smart device, to be communicated to wirelessly from whatever it is that's controlling that. That could be a hub, a smartphone, a smart assistant, or home assistant. In this video, I'm gonna show you everything that I know about Zigbee, what the pros and cons of it are, how it works, and why you might choose to use it in your house. So let's take a look. Hey, home automation guy, start the show. So the first component of a Zigbee network is the coordinator or the hub. The first smart device I ever bought was a Philips Hue kit, which came with this hub and also a light bulb. The light bulb is the Zigbee device and the device needs to be controlled by the coordinator or the hub. And it does this over a wireless protocol. And that wireless protocol is called Zigbee. A hub or coordinator can talk to multiple devices and they simply just connect and pair with each other. But if one of those devices happens to be too far away from the coordinator so it can't reach via its wireless network, it can route the signal through one of the other Zigbee devices. Zigbee devices that are mains wired are usually able to act as routers as well. Now it's important to remember that if you're using something like this, a smart light bulb in an existing light setup with a normal switch, it will only act as a Zigbee hub or repeater when the power is connected to it. So if you flick the switch off at the wall and take, remove the power to this device, it won't be able to act as a repeater anymore and you may disconnect half of your entire house from the Zigbee network and you won't be able to communicate with any of those devices. You can also buy specific Zigbee hubs or repeaters like this one by Trad Free. Trafidi? Ikea. And this plugs into any normal wall socket and acts as a repeater and can bounce the signal from the devices to your coordinator. It also has a handy USB charger in so it doesn't just waste a socket, you can charge your phone from it or anything else as well. But if your Zigbee device can talk to the coordinator and another router, it will actually talk through both of them at the same time. This makes it an incredibly resilient and fast network because if the signal can't get to the coordinator directly, it can go through another device or it can go there directly if able to. You can add many different devices together and create what's called a mesh network. This is why Zigbee is the perfect protocol if you have a large house or old walls that Wi-Fi signals have difficulty to penetrate through. I've stopped using my Philips Hue bridge and instead connect my Zigbee devices directly to Home Assistant using a USB Zigbee coordinator. These come in many different shapes and sizes and you can pick them up online off Amazon or AliExpress for 15 to 20 pounds or $30 or so. If you'd like to ditch your third party hubs and connect your Zigbee devices directly to Home Assistant using a USB dongle, hit the subscribe button because I'm gonna be doing a video about that shortly and it'll give you step-by-step -step instructions on how to connect them directly and get rid of those hubs forever. There is a Zigbee map plugin available in Hacks that can show you your own Zigbee network. Here you can see color coding where red is your coordinator Blue are any routers that you have in your network, and yellow are any devices. The yellow ones are usually the battery powered devices, and the blue ones are the ones that are mains powered, so they can act as hubs. If we zoom in on the devices here, you can see that I've got many different brands of devices all connecting to the same Zigbee coordinator, because they all talk the same language. Xiaomi, Sonoff, Hue, Ikea, they all speak Zigbee, so they all work together in my mesh network using one single USB coordinator. So let's talk about the pros of Zigbee. Why would we want to use it? Firstly, it's really low power because if you imagine Wi-Fi, you need to be able to stream 4K HD Netflix amounts of data through a normal Wi-Fi signal. You need to be able to submit a lot of data. So it takes a lot of power to be able to do that. A Zigbee device only needs to send like, is the door open or closed? It's 20 degrees in here. So it only sends small amounts of data and usually only when that state changes from when the door goes to open to closed or closed to open. This means that it uses a lot less power than Wi-Fi and that means it's able to use a small watch battery and last many years without having to replace that battery. Secondly, the Zigbee network is secured by default using 128-bit encryption. That means no one's able to snoop on your Zigbee network if you install it directly out of the box. You also need to pair the devices from your device by clicking a button to its hub or coordinator. So we can only have things that you authorize on the network talking to your hub or bridge. Thirdly, it also keeps these devices off my Wi-Fi network. 
which means that these devices can't be compromised and then hack my computer or my mobile phone or anything else that's running on my Wi-Fi network. Keeping them on their own self-contained network increases the security of my overall smart home. It also means that it's not fighting with the Wi-Fi network in order to send the data through. If I'm streaming a large uh, video on my TV, it may be difficult for information about my lights being turned on or off or the temperature to compete on my Wi-Fi network for signal for space. This means that the Zigbee network is separated and it only sends automation things, which means it will be more reliable and faster as well. I really like the cross-vendor capabilities of uh, Zigbee as well. That means there's tons of devices out there, thousands of them in fact, that work with the Zigbee protocol. They all communicate with the same coordinator, the same USB um, device in my case, or whatever hub you're using at home. This means that by buying one Zigbee coordinator, you're able to connect all of these devices without having to change anything or use different protocols. And the last pro for me is the mesh network. It makes it really reliable in an old house like mine, where often signals have difficulty going through the walls, or maybe the devices are far apart from the coordinator. So they can bounce through that mesh network really quickly, which makes it so as soon as I press that button on my smartphone to turn the light on, it turns on instantly. I've never had any problems with things dropping off my network or communication delays that I've often seen with some of my Wi-Fi smart devices. But where there are pros, there are also cons. In this case, the first con, in my opinion, is the Zigbee Alliance themselves. They are a conglomerate of really rich tech companies that influence the way that the Zigbee protocol is developed and adapted. That means in order for something to get added to the Zigbee specification, it has to be approved by these companies. This may mean that these companies have undue influence over the Zigbee protocol and the Zigbee standard, which may keep some of the little players out and may stifle some of the innovation that, that could be happening if other people were allowed to contribute to this. The Zigbee Alliance also won't let you put the Zigbee logo on any of your smart devices that you create unless it's certified by them. And that often costs a lot of money. You can see here that there's tens of thousands of dollars in some cases in order to get devices certified by the Zigbee Alliance for use on the Zigbee protocol. That doesn't mean it has to be certified to work with Zigbee, but if a certified device is approved, that means that it's guaranteed to work on that network. This can keep some of the smaller players out of the market, preventing them from being certified um, because it's just too cost prohibitive or it would raise the price of those Zigbee devices for the consumer if they had to pay that fee. And the final con is that Zigbee operates on the same radio spectrum as normal Wi-Fi. This means that if you're in a very, very Wi-Fi populated environment, such as a really tall apartment building with lots of apartments, with lots of people, with lots of powerful Wi-Fi networks, it may be difficult for the Zigbee signal to get through all of that noise. In this case, you may want to look at some alternatives. Z-Wave or Z-Wave, depending on where you are, uses a different radio frequency from Wi-Fi, which may be better suited to your environment. I personally don't have any Z-Wave devices because I've never used them. It's not because I don't like them, I just have no experience with them. The first device that I ever got that was my smart home device was the Hue Hub and a Hue light bulb. This uses Zigbee, so I naturally just decided to continue down that path and keep buying things that already worked to the other things I had. So hopefully that's given you a bit of a crash course in Zigbee and told you why I use it. If you'd like more information about how to use Zigbee devices in your network to make your home smarter, then why not click that subscribe button and then together we can make your home smarter.